All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday morning, just before noon here on the West Coast in California. August 28th, 2025 is the date here. Uh, latest activity shows a 3.0 earthquake on the globe hiding out here somewhere. Uh, let's see, we'll bring this down a little bit and get the exact, uh, there it is. Well, there's a, there it is hidden out there around the Indonesia area. Uh, pretty good cluster going on out there, but nothing of any abnormal activity. Um, some larger and deeper activity up here along the Aleutian Trench this morning. That uh, 5.9 earthquake coming into an area 83 miles deep into that subduction zone known as the Aleutian Trench. Of course, uh, earlier, uh, has it been over 30 days? Yes, it has. But uh, earlier... In the last couple months, we had a seven-pointer out here, and then of course the eight-pointer, 8.8, .8, end of July. Now we got a 5.9 within that middle point boundary. I'm starting to think maybe something else is brewing out here. I do want to look at uh, the historical models here. We're going to go back here in time a little bit and take a look at large events in this area. Uh, we're going to go 6.9 and above. And I just want to see here across this area of the Aleutian Trench because I uh, might be looking at maybe some larger events taking place out here soon. And I'll explain why. So that let's cover that. We'll check this out here on the map real quick. A lot of activity, obviously, right? There's a major subduction zone here. And, of course, any major subduction zone is capable of producing large earthquakes. There's that uh, 7.3 earthquake that struck last July about oh, it was a week and a half, almost two weeks previous to the 8.8 .8 that struck over here along the Curl Camp Chatka. So the 5.9 we're seeing is within this zone right here in between that middle point boundary. So I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit, see what we got here for historical data. Um, 7.9 back in 2014. Uh, quite a few sevens or so. It seems like uh, we should have at least a seven-pointer every few years or so in this area. Possible we could look, be looking at uh, maybe seeing a seven-pointer in this region soon. Uh, they do get bigger. Uh, they can get uh, up in the eight magnitude range here. And, of course, larger because it is a major subduction zone. Uh, 8.7 in this area back in 1965. 1957 for an 8.6, 1906, 8.3. So eight pointers are um, likely out here in this area of the Aleutian Trench. And it looks like there has been some time out here of built up strain uh, in terms of, uh, well, not seeing anything big along this area of the Aleutian Trench here, pretty much across this area. Now, of course, where the 7.3 struck last July is over here. Then the 8.1 back in 2021, that popped right around this area. But this region right here, well, it's wide open here for some large earthquake activity because of the amount of time that has passed uh, since the last decent rupture out here. So we well, got to watch that closely. Here in the last 30 days, um, not a whole lot of activity in this region as far as 4.5 and above goes. There's a little trail of activity leading back over to where that 7-pointer struck at the Sand Point, Alaska area in July but got to watch this segment right here folks a uh, uh, beautiful view of the oceanic trench here uh, shows that subduction zone uh, that could be ripe here for some larger activity we'll have to watch that closely but for now just a 5.9 83 miles deep into that subduction zone uh, as far as earthquake activity around Japan goes a couple more here overnight Watching this area around the Nankai Trough, it's got some big time potential out there. There's a 4.5 around the Izu Trench, a little bit of activity up north uh, into the southern end of the Kuril Kamchatka. The latest quake, though, shows some adjustment up there across the Russia area, where it's been somewhat quiet here in the last 24 hours. Uh, a couple earthquakes turned up out there, but uh, it looks like it's dying down drastically, but it doesn't mean that it's over. Uh, another newer quake here, it looks like on the uh, Nankai Trough area. Notice that 3.6. Looks like it's a pretty shallow earthquake there around segment E of the Nankai Trough. Of course, segment E did not rupture in the last series of ruptures, which were back in 1942 and 1944. Talking about this subduction zone right here. There's normally ruptures in pairs. It can rupture all at once. Section E did not rupture 
in the last uh, series of large events. So that means uh, likelihood of seeing just a complete rupture increases, uh, resulting in a bigger earthquake there across that Nankai trough. And that's going to be the subduction zone right here. That's the area where the Japanese uh, Meteorological Agency put out a mega quake warning for last year. So we'll watch that. Uh, through the Pacific Northwest, a couple more earthquakes around Mount St. Helens. It uh, looks like on the eastern flank here, some up around Mount Rainier as well. Um, looks like they added uh, a couple earthquakes there from last night. Let's go take a peek here at the seismograph stations here real quick on this Thursday. Go over here to uh, Mount Rainier real quick, see what we have. See if we can spot those two earthquakes that uh, they've mentioned just after, uh, what was it, just after midnight here, close to the 1 o'clock hour for a 0.4. Not a 4 magnitude, but a 0.4. That's going to be... I'm guessing this one right here. Because this is the line before 1 o'clock in the morning. So if that's 0.4, what about all these other earthquakes out here, you know? I, I don't get it. What about this one? You know, what about this red one here and this darker red one? Those are all earthquakes. There's quite a few earthquakes out here still. Ah, uh, man. All right, let's go check out the uh, Mount St. Helen seismograph station here. See what's going on there as well, because we're getting a, we're getting a little bit of earthquake activity up there across that uh, region. There's a couple quakes there this morning. Um, Mount St. Helens there showing. Oh, the latest a point one about four o'clock this morning. A little point one. That was before four o'clock. So here's the four o'clock time period. It would be on this blue line. So I'm guessing that one right there. There's a little little point four. What about all these other ones? <laughs> Jeez, you know, who gets to decide that that's the earthquake we're going to report today? You guys see it? Can you? I can barely see it here on this end, but that's a. That's a uh, point 0.1. That's a little point 0.1. But still, there's other earthquakes out there that uh, appear to be a little bit larger, including a couple of these right here. All right, we'll move on past that. No drastic changes there for now across those uh, volcanoes. One earthquake up here around the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, just offshore, it looks like. Maybe onshore, offshore. Uh, north of Cape Blanco State Park north of Port Ortford here. Um, got some earthquake activity. Uh, it does look like it's in the region where the tremor activity is occurring. Let's see what we got for Cascadia tremor yesterday. 26 epicenters. A little bit there in Oregon and Northern California, but we'll watch this later on this evening once they put this update out. Uh, I think there might be some uh, activity stirring up there as far as tremor counts go. Uh, Northern California, not a whole lot of activity stirring up for now. Uh, I don't think we got anything above 2.5 today. You know, Northern California had a three-pointer up here around Mount Shasta, south here Mount Shasta. Aside from that, generally small microquake activity out here around the San Andreas Fault today. Nothing big. Uh, up in the Yellowstone National Park, a couple earthquakes there from yesterday and today, including another two-pointer just after midnight. Let's go take a peek here at the Yellowstone Seismograph Stations. See if there's anything of noteworthy value going on there. So we're going to check this seismograph station here. Uh, there is that 2.3 showing up quite nicely. A couple other smaller quakes in there as well. This earthquake about 4 o'clock this morning, 5 o'clock this morning. Well, that's that 5.9 earthquake along the Aleutian Trench showing up quite nicely. A couple smaller earthquakes out here in the microquake range. But we're still seeing earthquake activity there across Yellowstone. It appears to be happening here across this area and also maybe picking some up there around the Hebgen Lake Estates as well. Again, uh, been getting a decent swarm over here. Got about 42 earthquakes in the last week of various magnitudes out there. Nothing big for now, but historically it's seen some large earthquake activity. Oil fields of Texas still rocking and rolling. Eastern portion of the country, not a whole lot going on. Um, let's see what we got here for the world view of things. Pretty common for earthquakes there of that magnitude, twos and threes across the Prucilli Trench. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Mediterranean region here, got some twos, nothing of abnormal movement. Uh, New Zealand, still somewhat quiet down here. Looks like a 3.2 late last night, but it's been absolutely quiet down there. 
a lot of activity stirring up here around this area of the globe today. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that. And of course the Alaska area. I still think that there's some further larger scale potential that needs to take place out here. Whether it's the Aleutian Trench or maybe the rest of the Curl Kamchatka. Maybe even the Nankai Trough down there. Of course, there's many areas. We could sit here all day and talk about what's overdue. All right, space weather activity real quick. Uh, see if anything's popping here on the sun. I know it died off a little bit here since uh, the last couple M flares a number of days ago, but looks like we did have two low-grade M flares here overnight and this morning. Still sizzling out there with um, consistent C flare activity. Proton events starting to fade away, uh, although there's still some uh, hitting the ionosphere out there. Let's take a look here at the magnetic structure of these sunspots. Uh, still watching this area back over here. I think this is the main main one out of all of these to watch here. Uh, in terms of complexity and potential stronger flaring activity. Uh, really not too concerned with this one over here anymore. It looks like it's starting to decay. Uh, this is a newer sunspot area that's still growing. Uh, this may have some potential there for some M flare activity. We'll have to watch that. Uh, also, another area back on the eastern limb, about ready to crest uh, the, to the, into the uh, Earth-directed view. That's a uh, area of interest as well. Let's check out the flare threat. 60% chance for M flare. X flare around 10 to 15% chance. C flare 99% chance or so. No major roars there in the forecast for now. A uh, quick glance here at the next close approach asteroids to the planet. Uh, let's take a look here. Got this one coming in today. It looks, well, tomorrow. About 420,000 miles. 18 foot, not that big of an asteroid. That would burn up and create a neat little fireball if it were to enter into the atmosphere. But that's still fairly safe. Uh, millions of miles away for these others, including a 180 foot airplane size asteroid. That would be a, yeah, that'd be a big one if that hit us but uh it's safe nothing uh, really uh, in terms of close proximity there let me check out the uh, killer whale volcano real quick see uh, if we got anything going on there across the uh, summit area been getting a lot of earthquake activity underneath the crater area of killer whale volcano and also just in general around the region of of the big island uh, no change here in terms of the inflation there was a little bit here a couple days ago that kind of Made me think something's going on below that may be altering the flow of recharging the summit area. But right now we're still going back up. We'll expect episode 32 here in a number of days. Uh, this has been a rinse and repeat cycle out here since December of last year. So it looks like it's still on chart here to uh, hit that episode 32 here in a number of days. Storm Prediction Center, looks like they added a little slight category here across portions of, well, four states out there in the yellow. Got a little 2% chance for some tornado activity. Wind, uh, that looks like to be it. Maybe a little bit of hail threat, but not all that big of a deal uh, when it comes to the severe weather models out there today. Uh, quick glance at any uh, tropical systems out here. We'll go ahead and put this into motion. Um... Eastern Pacific over here, a little bit of activity, but that's not expected to hit land. I don't see anything coming into the Gulf right now. Maybe towards the middle of September, it looks like something may be brewing down here, but uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Obviously, that's uh, over two weeks away for that model. All right, let's see here. Anything else going on? Seismograph stations are up. Live stream is up, by the way, as well. It went down. It had something to do with my... Um, my solar generator here that I use seems like when I get to a certain level or above a certain level it triggers a safety fail save type of switch to where I have to reset it manually uh, because I run everything here off of solar and then at night um, it uh, runs off the batteries that are charged up by solar that's how I keep all my computer stuff running so if the grid goes down, say my electricity for the house goes down, I'll still be able to at least run the live stream and the internet and everything else like that off of the uh, solar and the batteries. But it seems like when it gets up to a certain level, it will um, reset itself somehow. So I'm trying to work on that. Anyway, uh, yeah, live streams up and running. Seismograph stations are all online and operable, it looks like. A little spike there on Barrett. Also another one there on Anza. Nothing big happening right now, but of course we got to be prepared. 
things can happen uh, in a blink of an eye out here. So have yourself a wonderful Thursday just before noon here along the West Coast. So we'll see you guys out here a little bit later on this evening unless something major happens. Have yourself a wonderful day and stay safe out there, folks.